dilated release, release party, party DVD. Are you gonna say just you're watching the release party? You're watching the release party? This is a documentary or a DVD, and I am not a heroin addict. I just look like this because I got some stupid shit. You know, and that's what makes hip hop is always like that constant beat that you can always blend and defines it from other genres. It's the drum. Oh, where's my drum kit? So that's that. But the loop like that and just the drum. It's not enough. I felt like there was something. I was hearing that singing because I heard it on the record. So I put that in. And I added it to the turnarounds to make it more interesting. <laughs> right? So every time, so now when the loop's turning, I'm playing that on top of it. Even disguising the click a little more. You know what I'm saying? So, and that do 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 is. That's what's under there. You know, it's under the kicks. So, beats are like women. Like, the snare is the tits. It's the tits. That's the ass. I like the ass way bigger than I like the tits. You know, you could have fake tits, but you can't get a fake ass. Well, you can now, Dave, which is crazy, but... So I got the loop. I got the... Got that. Got my kick in my snare. I was like, we gotta bring it home now with the concept, which is, I heard earlier in the record, don't you take my kindness for weakness, which is something that people have done for dilated all the time because cats are well-spoken or carry themselves in a certain fashion. People feel like they could take advantage of you, but you know, so be it. But at a certain point, you gotta let people know, you know, how you feel. Don't you take my kindness for I'm not claiming to be the best musician, I'm not claiming any of that, but I'm a manipulator of their, of that creation and, and making it something palatable for us to get busy over. Don't you take my kindness for weakness Because I'm gentle doesn't mean I'm not strong Hands on your Don't you take Don't do it. 
I would memorize like the message and like I'd kick it for my great grandmother, rest in peace. And, and they didn't know what the hell I was doing. They'd, they'd be like, Michael keeps telling these stories. He's telling these stories. Tell that story again. And I'd just tell them the story again, you know, and they just, everyone loved it. They'd all huddle around me and I'd just tell these stories. But I was really just rapping lyrics that I memorized. I didn't really even really put it together as part of a bigger culture or anything until maybe Run DMC's first album or something. I heard some cats in the schoolyard. I was like in maybe fifth grade or something before the fifth grade. Some cats on the schoolyard were uh, battling, battling using some of the lyrics like they were, you know, just battling each other with the same lyrics from the record. So that's when I knew it was something bigger. And the reason I was so attracted to it was because I was actually seeing that directly around me. I saw graffiti around me. I saw the breakdancers. It wasn't something like if you were living in Kansas or something you had never heard of and seen this phenomenon. Like I understood it already because it was in my immediate area. Um, so I, it's just been around me forever, as long as I can remember. You know, there's a radio station in LA called 1580 K Day at the time. Uh, it was an AM radio station, and they they had basically had radio on lock at the time, man. They they had hip hop. They were they were like the uh, the other side of the bridge for LA hip hop. You know, a bridge got to have two sides, and they were the LA side, man. And basically, that was the way that LA really got hip to hip hop culture. Not just a couple songs. I think was through the music that came through K Day. There were already people that were rapping and doing different things out here, but I think K Day really brought the music, which in turn turned people onto the whole culture. Hip hop has been the anthem of my life because I remember six or seven, I definitively said, This is the music I want to like. I love what you guys played, and that was cool, but I'm here now. I, I, originally, I wanted to rap with someone who kind of looked like me because then we'd, we'd have some thing, but white rappers at the time, it just didn't happen. So I met Raka, and you know, he was five years older than me. Everything in the world said we shouldn't do this. But I remember distinctively when we went into the hip hop shop, I liked the way he rhymed one, and then two, after we started talking for a minute, he had this piece of paper in his notebook, and it said, I forgot the name of the song, but he had the song title at the top, and then it said verse one, and then it was neatly written out, and then it said bridge, hook, verse two, and I was like, damn, this dude is organized. We helped start the L.A. chapter of uh, Rocksteady Crew called the L.A. Bomb Squad and helped start the West Coast chapter of Rocksteady Crew. And by being a member of Rocksteady Crew, I was also brought into Universal Zulu Nation. So um, through that, you get to deal with, that's like going to, going to intern with the original architects of the game. That's going to, you know, study with the best. And I think that that's, that's how I wanted to do it. They're bumping some, they're bumping a little bit of slow jams right now. Ah, ah, what's that, some, some blue magic? Who is that? Ah. I love that, man. Put on some hot, some, uh, some trebled out oldies on. Ooh, no bass, no bass in the oldies, man. It really brings out the highs and the voice that falsetto, man, can really just breathe, you know. That falsetto just, you know.